In this tutorial, I would like to show you how to get started with Prime NG10 and Angular 10. We will begin with Angular CLI and create a sample application and then add Prime NG. Let's open up the console. And create a new application called Prime NG Sandbox. Would you like to add Angular routing? Sure. Which style sheet format would you like to use? SCSS. Well, basically, these two questions are not really related to uh, Prime NG. It's just Angular CLA is asking me uh, whether I would like to use router or something. But uh, I'm not going to use router or write in SCSS. Just random answers, let's say. So it's not really required to use Prime NG. You can just answer whatever you want to these questions. So it's installing packages now. So they are done. Uh, let's see what we have so far. OK, so here I have my source folder in the app compound HTML. A couple of boilerplate stuff. Uh, to see that, you can just run ng serve so the localhost 4200 will give me this boilerplate stuff from english cli now i would like to at prime ng before that i would like to just remove this app component html and an empty page that's where i'll be working with prime ng okay so let's go to the prime ng website here there's a nice getting started page it's telling me uh, first we need to install prime ng and the prime icons prime icons are our new a set of icons. Um, we are using Prime Icons 4.0, which provides the new modern uh, icons, which are totally from ground up redesigned. Okay. Let's add npm install Prime NG followed by Prime Icons. That's done. Now the prime icons. Now you see this import section. Whenever you need something from Prime NG, you need to import it to your application to one of your NG modules. So here it is saying that I can import accordion from accordion module or menu item from the API. In the past, we had this prime ng slash prime ng shorthand, but it was um, deprecated like two years ago. Now with prime ng 10, it is removed. So we hope that you have you already removed that in your applications so that during the migration you will you will not have a problem if you ha haven't so far then you need to for example if you're going to use button let's say the import section states that import button module from prime engine slash button not prime engine slash prime engine by the way prime engine 10 provides a lot of new buttons to choose from, but we will going, going to just use this one. Okay, so let's import the button. I'm going to open my app module. And here, importing the button. And also I need to add it to the import section of my application so that I can use it anywhere in my application. So button module to the top and in the import section of, of my main app module. Now at app.component, I can, let's say, type P button, sorry, type button, and the directive is P button, as seen from the documentation. Let's call, call the label as prime ng, and to that should be it. Okay, let's 
run it. And we will see a button, hopefully, but not the button that you are expecting, like these fancy buttons. Okay, now we have a button here, but it doesn't look good. It's not nice as these ones. So back to the documentation. Yeah, we missed the style section. Now, there are three styles, mandatory styles. One is the prime icons, which we have already installed. There are a couple of places to add this. I'm going to use Angular JSON here. Then the theme of your choice, I'm going to use Saga Blue, but you have already uh, 32 free themes to choose from, including Arnie, Bootstrap, Material, and um, Prime One themes. So I'm going to choose Saga Blue right now. And finally, this Prime in GCSS. This file was like a bundle in Prime Engine 9 and the prior versions. So it was not really optimized because it was combining all the CSS of all the components. Suppose that you only want to use dropdown, but this file was containing the CSS of data table, tab view, accordion as well. So the whole bundle. But with Prime Engine 10, the whenever you will you need to use the component, you will import it, and once it is in your application on the page, then the, the CSS of that uh, class, like drop-down uh, CSS, will be include, included implicitly. So if you're going to use drop-down only, you will not be getting the CSS of other components. So that's why the new PrimeNG CSS file is quite lightweight and significantly smaller than its predecessor. Okay, looks good. And uh, also, I just need to add some padding to the main body element. ng serve. Now I should see my button. Okay, looks better. Now let's add an input field. Here we have an input text here somewhere. We have so many components. I sometimes got get lost in uh, in showcase. So let's choose this one, the float label. Let's check out the code. Okay, first I need to import the text module. Where is it here? So input text module. Then I need to import it to the import section so that I can use it in my application. Here we have a float label. And it's, I'm going to bind something to this. So I will just choose this one, title. Let's go to app.html and call float label. So here is the input text title, let's say input title and the ng model the two-way binding will be for the title pro uh, property and we also need a label right for in title for accessibility let's say title that looks good but i'm missing something here The ng model can't bind to ng model since it is it is not a known property of input. Well, when, whenever Angular tells you that can't bind to something, but you think that you it, it should supposed to work, you probably are missing something from the configuration. In this case, well, the error doesn't say much, but the trick is the forms module from Angular. This one. Where is it? Yeah, that, that contains the engine model. Okay, 
now I have my fancy label, blah, blah, blah. And let's write the title here to see if I'm binding it correctly. Although I've just realized that I'm not using our input text. This is the regular input text. Looks meh. So I'm going to add prime input text. Much better. Okay. Now, okay, let, we can just add some space here. In the future tutorials, I'm going to use um, Prime Flex for with spacing utilities, so it will be much easier. Okay, so now we can have the title Prime in G. Okay. I wonder if we can add a click event here to check to, let's say, uppercase the title. So that I can use them type. Otherwise, without the string property, I, I, the ID wouldn't allow me, to, wouldn't suggest the uppercase. Okay. Let's call Prime. Yeah, it works. Okay. Everything seems to be working and so far so good. So that's it for now, but I will just give you a scenic preview of what's coming in the future tutorials. So not right now we have a working application of Prime Engine and we will put it built built upon this example for the, for the future tutorials. But Remember that getting started section where you we can have material themes, right? Now things will get more interesting. This is my one my favorite things about Prime Engine, and I worked, I mean, a lot months and months on this to make a design agnostic library so that you can switch between themes on the fly because you know in Angular you have the material libraries, bootstrap libraries. And every library is bound to a specific design. But with Prime Engine, the power of Prime Engine is that you can switch them on the fly because it's design agnostic. The um, where is that? I'll, I'd like to show you that mm. guide. Yeah, if you can see this uh, image, the core just contains the alignments. They're they're skinless, right? But the themes just provide the colors and border color spacing utilities. Uh, the core comes from the Prime Ninja library, and the themes are like an you know add-on to that. There are via material themes, uh, bootstrap themes, custom themes, and our team is working on providing new themes right now, so that uh, you can switch them without rewriting your entire application. Suppose that you are going to switch from material to bootstrap, and bootstrap to your custom style guide, your custom to your clients. Uh, theme, the, the theme that you your clients ask for, or you can just write the same application for one client, change the theme, and you know work it with work that with, with another client. So, okay, so back to theming here. I'm going to change my application to material one right now. I'm just going to pick the material light indigo, and I'm just going to maybe the compact one. one. It's the it's more smaller inputs and buttons okay let's do that and finish this tutorial here i had the theme right i'm just going to replace that with a material one let's run the application you see to switch from my theme to material i don't need to replace my library in no need to learn new libraries. Okay, now it is a material theme. This one is material. I think we had this in Prime Engine 10. We have this nice trick, the input field. Uh, 
uh, which you know changes the appearance okay that was it um, i hope you enjoyed this video and the information that i've shared in the upcoming videos we will go uh, into the you know more complex examples and i would like to cover some pitfalls and best, best practices as well to provide some tips and tricks like uh, also i would like to cover backend integration validations uh, more work on theming migration guide migration to prime ng10 working with the templates and basically a lot of things actually so stay tuned and take care for now bye bye